How does the system work? Well, everybody's looking for a silver bullet, you know, and I always like to say the silver bullet has three components. One is gaining the knowledge, two is internalizing the knowledge, and three is executing the knowledge that you've learned. I find that where it breaks down mostly is step two, and that's internalizing the knowledge. That's because that's the difficult part. That's where people really have to work at changing their habits, changing what's comfortable, getting out of their comfort zone, doing it differently so that they change their habits. If you do that, your chances of execution in an, in a, in, for increased performance are greatly enhanced. And that's what I try and do in coaching and facilitating people uh, with people is to try and encourage them and inspire them to make the effort and take the commitment to make the change. You know, it's not difficult to do 50 sit-ups. What's difficult is to do 50 sit-ups every day for a year, and that's the difference. The Revenue Builder is based on behavioral psychology, so what we pay attention to is what people do, not what they say. It's one of the ways that the Revenue Builder is significantly different from other sales training programs. Based on behavioral research done by Norcross, DiClemente, and Prochaska, who had written a book actually called Changing for Good that I recommend to you to read it to your convenience. Let's move over to how the program actually works. And to begin, I want to show you the Revenue Builder map and have you take a minute and have a look at it. This shows the main fundamentals of the Revenue Builder. Defining your target market, understanding the process, understanding the customer or prospect, advancing the sale, and a system for utilizing all of the above every day. So let's begin with defining your target market. In the Revenue Builder world, we use a creamer to define our target market. We prefer the symbolism of cream rising to the top. It's utilizing your customer resources to their maximum advantage, and that includes time. So we believe that over a time continuum of say two to five years, it can vary from company and industry to industry, but over that time continuum, we should have every reason to believe that the people in our creamer will become our customers, and that's our goal. It's about making quality decisions about how you use the company's resources, particularly time. Who you deal with and sometimes who you don't deal with is equally important. I want to go to a tool that we call matching challenges with solutions. We do a series of exercises to get to this point, but when we get to this tool, on the left hand side we list our customers' challenges and problems they face every day in their workplace. On the right hand side, we align our solutions, our products and services that are solutions with those challenges that our customers face. This is a very interesting exercise in reality and everyone in the seminars that have taken them has agreed that this is an extremely valuable tool. If, if, if your business was a restaurant, this would be called your menu. And people deal with you or eat at your restaurant because of the menu and they don't eat at your restaurant because of the menu, which is equally important. So having a clear understanding of what your menu is will enhance your business. You learn some very interesting things when you work with this tool. Sometimes you learn that you have solutions that don't align with challenges in the marketplace. And that's fine because it gives you an opportunity to develop new business and new clients for those solutions. Sometimes you learn that your clients have challenges for which you don't have solutions. It gives you the opportunity to develop new solutions if you feel that's the right way to go. Or you can simply delete those solutions that aren't uh, applicable to your marketplace anymore. But the key is understanding your customer and understanding the challenges that they face and learning to think in those terms. Understanding the mindset of the customer will help you understand what the value proposition is that we represent to our customer base. And that is key to becoming customer focused in the marketplace. And you know this is interesting because when we survey companies, when we're first dealing with them, or talking to them, and we ask them, are you product focused or are you customer focused? Guess what everybody answers? You got it. They all say they're customer focused. Some are, but frankly, most aren't. To give you an example, thousands and thousands of drills are sold in the world every year, but nobody wants a drill. They want holes. And if you were to ask your potential customer, what kind of drill do you want? They probably couldn't tell you. But if you ask them what kind of hole they want, they'll start talking and tell you immediately. They know whether they got to go through plastic or steel or gyp rock or whatever the case might be. And they know what they want the hole to accomplish. So when we become customer focused, we begin to think with the mindset and learn to think with the mindset of our customer and their challenges. Because you know, 
In terms of differentiation and long-term business strategies, what customers will pay for value added. They will pay for what they value. And we only add value when, number one, we begin to understand how our, what our customers' true challenges are and, what we, and we begin to see ourselves as solution providers.